Madam President. Uh, Madam President, I have seven requests for committees to meet during today's session of the Senate. They have the approval of the majority and minority leaders. Duly noted. Thank you, Madam President. Before I begin the remarks that brought me here today, I want to say a word about Richard Trumpka, a hero to all of us who care about working people and a good friend to many of us. I'm proud to call him a friend. And proud to have been with him as an ally in causes and principles that are so important to the present of America and the future of America. I'm proud to have been with him on picket line and platform, to have stood with him and behind him in supporting the rights of working men and women to decent pay, fair treatment, and safety on the job. He came from America, and he never forgot where he came from. His life is a lesson to so many of us who seek to emulate his devotion to the public interest and as a leader of the labor movement, his life always also reminds us that unions count, that collective bargaining means something, that the rights of working men and women succeed because they come together in unions, and we ought to respect those unions, listen to them, and champion their right to represent fairly and freely and to organize men and women on their jobs. So we will miss Richard Trumka, but his legacy is going to be an inspiration to all of us, certainly to me, in fighting even harder for the great convictions, the sense of conscience, the wonderful heart and spirit that embrace people who disagreed with him. A life's lesson for all of us. Today, uh, I was very proud to introduce with my colleague, Senator Menendez, who is leading this effort, Senators Cornyn, Senator Grassley, the September 11th Transparency Act. Now, Members of this body have heard me talk about this issue before. It has been a repeating issue for me, but for this body as well. We passed JASTA because we wanted the 9-11 families to have access to the courts and have their fair day in court. We passed a resolution in 2018 to require that the government declassify to the maximum extent possible all of the information surrounding 9-11. JASTA was passed over President Obama's veto. His veto was overwritten on a bipartisan basis. The resolution demanding more declassification was passed with overwhelming bipartisan support and signed by the President. The letters that we have written, the questions that I've posed in hearing, the press conferences held, the constant effort to provide documents and information to those families so they can have their fair day in court has been a continuing and constant one. And so far, completely unavailing. Administration after administration, Obama, Trump, and hopefully not, but apparently Biden, have resisted these calls for declassification and disclosure. That information is evidence that those families need to seek justice 
in their effort to hold accountable the government of Saudi Arabia for its alleged complicity, its aiding and abetting, its support for the 9-11 attack. They want to hold them liable in an American court, which JASTA enables them to do. They want to pinpoint responsibility and liability so that we will know as Americans whether the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia was in fact complicit and supportive of those attackers. The truth they seek is not just for themselves, it is for the American people. And the concealment by successive administrations denies the American people the truth they deserve and need. Today, I was proud to stand with Senator Menendez and some of those families, led by Terry Strada and Brett Eagleson, in front of this Capitol as we announced our introduction of the act the September 11 Transparency Act that would very simply require the Director of National Intelligence, the Attorney General, and the Director of the CIA to conduct declassification reviews of certain investigative documents in their 9-11 file. It is a baby step toward full disclosure and truth-telling. But I was so proud to stand with these families, represented by Terry Strada, among others, when she said, and I'm quoting, yes, we know the kingdom played a major role in supporting and financing al-Qaeda. And evidence demonstrates that Saudi agents who the kingdom sent here aided and abetted some, if not all, the 19 hijackers leading into the attack. It is an indisputable fact the hijackers were living in our country 12 to 18 months prior to 9-11, planning and plotting the murder of thousands, and the FBI and the CIA knew about at least two of them, Nawaf al-Hamzi and Khalid al-Nidal. She further said, By keeping evidence hidden that will shed light on the brutal murder of our loved ones, our own government is not only perpetuating our continued pain and suffering, but it is also leaving the facilitators of the attacks unaccountable and our nation vulnerable to terrorist attacks. Her remarks were so powerful, I hope that every one of my colleagues will read them, and I ask that they be entered in the record if there's no objection. Without objection. We are fast approaching 9-11, the 20th anniversary of that horrific, unspeakable murder of thousands of our fellow citizens, including Terry Strata's husband and Brett Eagleson's father. And Brett Eagleson put it very, very starkly and simply. I'm not quoting, but essentially his warning to us ought to reverberate in these halls. Public officials on that anniversary will be making speeches about how we should never forget, about how we need to commemorate the memories of all who perished in 9-11. But as he said, their words will ring shallow or ho hollow if their own government continues to refuse to disclose documents and evidence needed for them to seek justice. Those families deserve better. And the cause is bigger than just those families. It is the American people who deserve better. They deserve and they need to know the truth about 
whether the complicity and other kinds of potential criminal activity can be proved in a court of law, can be used to learn about future action to be taken. And if agencies of the United States government, including our intelligence agencies, knew about those attackers and the danger they posed and failed to take sufficient action, we should know those facts as well. It is incomprehensible why the United States government has failed to provide this truth to the American people. There has been no explanation for the failure to declassify. There is no explanation for invoking the State Secrets Act. The courts have said that that privilege, the state secrets privilege, cannot be invoked unless it could reasonably be expected that there would be a harm to our national security. No agency, no official of the United States government have ever said what harm could result, especially 20 years after that attack. The idea that sources or methods could be endangered seems far-fetched. Certainly, there has been no such contention. The idea that maybe the Saudis would be embarrassed is a possible explanation, but it is no excuse, none, for refusing to declassify and disclose this information. The fact that the Saudis may be embarrassed or they may be held liable is no valid reason to withhold this truth from those families and from the American people. The administration, at the very least, owes us an explanation. We've demanded it again and again at the Attorney General's confirmation hearing, at the oversight hearings for the director of the FBI, at hearings for confirming lower but top-ranking officials of the Department of Justice, and every one of them has promised to look into it. But nothing back. No explanation. No justification. So Senator Menendez and I, along with our colleagues, Senators Cornyn and Grassley, have introduced the September 11 Transparency Act. And it wouldn't require the declassification of any document, but it would require the review. And it is not unprecedented because this Congress, seven years ago, passed and President Obama signed the Intelligence Authorization Act for the fiscal year 2014. It had a similar provision requiring the Director of National Intelligence to complete a declassification review of documents collected during the Osama bin Laden raid in Pakistan in 2011. This measure should have broad bipartisan support, just as JASTA did and the resolution calling for declassification in 2018. And I've been proud to stand with my Republican colleagues in favor of simple justice. As Senator Schumer said today at that meeting in front of the Capitol, justice, justice, justice. That's what these families deserve. That's what the American people should expect of their government, not concealment or obstruction and obfuscation. Right now, these families are in a struggle against the government of Saudi Arabia. But equally so against their own government in seeking fairness and transparency, disclosure, when it counts for them and when it should count for the American people. We will continue this fight. I don't expect any single speech will persuade administration officials, certainly no 
single speech of mine, but they're going to be making speeches as we go closer to 9-11. And let them keep in mind that the voices and faces of those families, Brett Eagleson and Terry Strata and others who were there today and many others in Connecticut, as well as New Jersey and New York and all around the country will be there as well. And ultimately, our government must be held accountable for telling the American people the truth. Thank you. I yield the floor.